Well, um, it's a very bright Sunday morning here in India, the 24th of September 2016. The Tithi, which, is, which was operating today during the sunrise here in India, was Dashami Tithi. And the Nakshatra, which was operating again at sunrise today here in India, was Unarvasu Nakshatra. So I'm going to speak a little bit about the Titi of the day today before we could go to the Nakshatra of the day. So um, this Dashami Titi, the nature of the Dashami Titi is often said to be called as Saumya Parada, okay, which can be interpreted as being uh, sober or uh, which would increase in clarity. And this is because it is Soumya, Soumya, it is one that leads to a state of happiness. So typically what you see is today is going to be a good day as per the Shamititi to be following work, uh, you know, good to be doing work like marriages. It's good for marriages, it's good for travel, it's good for conveyance, it's good for peaceful and, uh, you know, result bearing work. Uh, it's good for ornamentation, you know, dressing up and going for that, uh, for these festivals, um, enjoying. So all these activities come under the Soumya Parada. Now, according to uh, Muhurta Chintamani and also according to Brahat Samhita, um, uh, Dharmaraj, which is Yama, who is supposed to be Dharmaraj, is supposed to be the deity who is responsible for everything which is related to dharma and the righteous way of living. So he rules over the Dashami Titi. So um, this Krishna Paksha Dashami Titi is very auspicious for all acts of uh, virtue, um, you know, attending religious functions, uh, conducting spiritual practices and other pious activities. Now, as per uh, Purva Kalamrata, um, the Nagas are supposed to be uh, the ruling deities of the 10th Titi. Okay, Dashami means the 10th Titi. And so the Krishna Paksha, which is the waning phase of the moon, the Dashami, the 10th lunar day, is said to be very auspicious for gain, gaining wisdom because of the Nagas or the serpents, you know, gaining wisdom and secret knowledge. Now the Nagas were also related to administering medicines, um, you know, uh, purging of poison, uh, surgery, anything related to water-related bodies like rivers, lakes being by these rivers, lakes, seas, wells, all these places is where the Nagas have very strong dominion over. So they generally are supposed to be the guardians of the treasure. So all activities which needs a, a, sign, a kind of understanding deeper secrets of uh, the cosmos and the working of the cosmos is what you could probably um, be activating on today's day. Now coming to this nakshatra which is operating today is a uh, Punarvasu nakshatra. Now the word uh, the Punarvasu comes from the root Sanskrit word called as Punaha. Now Punaha means again, right? It means repetition, it means restoration, it means replenishment. And Vasu means to shine, to be good again, to grow bright. So all these things are associated with uh, your Punarvasu. Now, at times, whenever we talk about these words of reputation, restoration, replenishment, so it kind of sounds like an enigma sometimes, but this Puna also means a revolution from obscur uh, obscurity to radiance. Uh, it also means uh, transformations from poverty to wealth and abundance, from um, decadence to spiritual elevation. So all these things, you know, wherever you see these extremities can uh, signify Punarvasu. So it signifies largely the interaction of the contradictory, right? So naturally, if you see uh, most of the Punarvasu uh, natives, okay, can become masters of the art of replication. They understand this right from the birth and, uh, the, you know, it becomes quite natural for a Punarvasu native uh, to be able to copy things, to duplicate work, uh, how to multiply um, the efforts, how to regenerate from the seeds. So what you often see is uh, these, these people 
could become masters or you know can be master gardeners and whenever say when gardening it could be literal or also it could be allegorical or figurative so they are very good in growing things in germinating ideas germinating concepts and uh, even though it might lead them to failure in the first round they never give up you know they come and they bounce back now essentially this bouncing back ability of punarvasu essentially comes from these two uh, stars which uh, represent punarvasu largely is castor and pollux now these are the gemini twins right the full moon meaning of uh, them the gemini twins means the two who give back the good now castor as per um, uh, jyotish is said uh, as per western astrology is said to be the mortal twin known for his skill in horseman's uh, horsemanship and this star usually suggests uh, intellect sudden fame and honor and sometimes followed by sudden losses that is because of pollux the pollux is the immortal twin of these twins and is known for his skill in boxing so what you see is this uh, this star of pollux usually gives uh, a nature a very courageous nature but however it could be very cold and heartless so what you see is these two contradictory forces operating and that is what is punarvasu so one is boxing you down in life and floors you and the other is one which rises up fights uh, you know fights uh, and he bounces back and you know he gallops like the horse so you see this um, this theme of uh, rising from the phoenix is very aptly put in this uh, punarvasu nakshatra okay so this is the Uh, this is how the star has been referred to as the star of renewal okay so if you know the ardha nakshatra which was operating yesterday so it is the bleak storms after the ardha uh, the storm makes the the atmosphere very gloomy right and punarvasu is the return of the light okay it's the rays of the light which hit the uh, the earth plane after the storm and that is punarvasu so that is light again right there is fresh energy again so it's a calm after the storm as they say and that is the beauty of nature so these people with this uh, punarvasu a prominent punarvasu being a very prominent planet in their chart could have this ability to bounce back again okay from uh, from tapping into their deep limitless inner resources that is what is the key you know they bounce back because they have this limitless and uh, unbounded uh, force or these resources or these energies within them that can help them to accomplish their goals so from that perspective you can see that these people because they can go deeper down they can go introspect very really well they can go and tap into their inner resources they have a, a deeply philosophical inspirational and spiritual and sometimes very really, uh, truly genuine understanding which, which gives them uh, their true wisdom so there hardly seems to be a, a, a very shadow side to these people because they they are quite likable by everybody they are quite charming because of their forgiving ways uh, others seem to forgive them very easily as well now another theme that i have also seen with this nakshatra is they love to travel however when um, when when i say they love to travel there is also another part which is associated with that is it's just like an arrow an arrow likes to travel right but it eventually wants to get back into the quiver and uh, that is how most of the natives are the quiver uh, the quiver of arrows is what is the symbology of this nakshatra so it means to say that they love to go traveling out to achieve their goals the arrow of aspiration it's the arrow of yearning it's the arrow which wants to hit the target and what once their goals have been achieved they want to return back to uh, their uh, to, to 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 their natal stage or their back to their home that is the the theme the definite theme of return and renewal so what you want to see that with most of these nervous natives is they might want to go out 
um, but at the end of the day, they always want to return back to their own homes. Is that is where they find their renewal. That is where they find their strength to replenish. That is where they find their um, energies back again. So it is like these mobile phones that you carry to your workplace uh, outside every day. And once you're back home, you recharge your batteries. And that is what a Pundar Vasu native is all about. They, they, if they have to get recharged, if they have to get um, back on their feet um, and energized and rejuvenated, they need to charge their batteries. And the charging of the batteries would happen only at their home or in places where they find a lot of comfort. So what you see uh, with uh, a lot of Pundar Vasu natives is they find their comfort by uh, being at home. They are uh, the people who love to work from home. Uh, they are the people, you know, there was an Arabic astrologer who made this um, observation. He said, the nervous natives are so very latched onto their homes is even when they go traveling, they have a tendency to take their favorite pillow with them on, uh, you know, their travel. That is because they want to feel at home. That, that is a pillow which gives you the rest is what will make you at home. Or you want to be carrying your um, or your favorite, uh, you know, home uh, slippers, you know, your night slippers that you wear is what they want to carry it wherever they want to go on travel because that is what makes them feel, um, you know, they are at home and that is what uh, recharges their batteries, right? So um, what I wanted to show you uh, with this element is I wanted to show you the chart of... Um, Sri Ram, because when you're talking about the quiver of arrows and uh, the the earning of the arrows to go and achieve this objective, so that is when you want to talk about uh, Sri Ram and his chat. So let me share my screen here. Um, so I want to talk because Sri Ram's. When you discuss about Sri Ram's chat, you realize the Sri Ram. Um, Share screen. All right. Um, this is Sri Ram's chat. So uh, it's not Sri Ram's chat. This is uh, the the words from Adhyatma Ramayana, which is written by Maharishi Vedavyas. Okay. So there is a description of the birth of Bhagwan Sri Ram and his birth time. Now, what is the meaning of this verse, which? Uh, you know, which states Madhu Maase Sita Pakshe. Madhu Maase means Madhu Maase is a reference to the lunar month Chaitra. The Chaitra lunar month typically operates in the month of April in the Gregorian calendar. Now, uh, look at it. It's it's the spring season or the Vasanta Rutu. Okay. Sita Pakshe. Sita Pakshe is a reference to the Shukla Paksha, the waxing moon. Okay? Navam Yam. Navam Yam is Navam Yititi, the ninth lunar day after the new moon. Okay? Karaka Dake Shune. Now, that is a reference to say that uh, he is born in the Karkataka Lagna, which is your cancer. Okay? His ascendant was in cancer. Punarvas nakshatra sahite, which means with Punarvasu nakshatra, uchiste graha panchake, which means five of the planets were exalted or were in that exaltation. Right? So, what it means is his moon star was Punarvasu. Right? So, Cancer in his chart also becomes the Indu Lagna. The Cancer is also the own home for the moon. And he says that, this Vedavya says that five planets were in exaltation. So which were the five planets? It was Jupiter, it was Mercury, it was Mars, it was Venus, okay? And uh, so it was Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, um, and uh, Mars. Okay, so these, these are these five planets which were uh, exalted and Saturn, sorry, it was fast Saturn. So you have Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn, Mars, and Venus. These are the five planets which were in exaltation. And then he refers Mesham Pushani Samprapte, which means 
the word is very very uh, samrapte the word in sanskrit which means which is arriving it also means arriving or coming so it means that sun was arriving mesha which is aries so which means he is not saying that sun is in aries he is saying sun is arriving in aries so this term is very clear from also if you look at the videos from kn rao g on saptarishi's astrology channel he also mentions that sun was never in aries okay if you take uh, navami tithi and with moon being in punarva so so sun has to be in pisces so he is only referring to saying that sun is approaching mesha which means is very close to mesha so it says pushpa vrishti samakule which means when he was born avasare jagannatha when when bhagwan shri jagannath the supreme lord of the universe was born then there was sweet scented flowers which were rained profusely at that one muhurta one muhurta is about 12 minutes from the sky okay and on the castle where shri ram was born so it says pushpa vrishti samakule avasare jagannatha paramatma sanatanah so that is what it means is there were uh, sweet scented flowers which were which were rained profusely on the muhurta when shri ram was born so this is a description from adhyatma ramayana so this again gives you the uh, a very clear indication that shri ram was born when his moon was in punarvasu nakshatra and again not to re- not remember uh, not to forget it's the quiver which shows which never replenishes and is arrow to achieve this goal okay so uh um, so this is just a, a reference that i wanted to show you to um sri ram shot and how punarvasu nakshatra was operating in this shot so um what what you have to remember with the life of even sri ram what you realize is as they give to the world the punarvasu natives they get double the prosperity that is what ram's life was all about he always wanted to give to his people okay um he always was worried about his kingdom and uh, his uh, subjects okay so he worked for the prosperity of the subjects and um, that is what this nakshatra is strongly connected and this called as a very prosperous nakshatra and i have been doing some research and uh, on this nakshatra and what i found is a lot of um, ultra rich people and when i'm saying ultra rich it is not about millions i'm talking billionaires a lot of billionaires that you see is you see that uh, they have uh, at least one or two planets in punarvasu nakshatra okay so this is common theme you can go and look at uh, um, bill gates chart he has his ascendant in uh, punarvasu nakshatra so uh, see, but again what you have to understand with a punarvasu native is and they don't need a lot for themselves so they are quite content with very little but uh, the more they give out the more there uh, there is risk replenishment of their resources so that is what it's uh, what i call as is a green revolution happening you know uh, money is the color of green okay and money goes out money comes in in more abundance so this is the secret of punarvasu now the deity who is associated with punarvasu is called as aditi now she is the mother of the gods she is said to be boundless uh, she is said to be vast and limitless she is the goddess of abundance she is uh, she is uh, she is referred to as mighty she is referred to as the cosmic creativity she is also said to be the universal motherhood okay she is a universal mother she is also considered to be the mother of the 12 adityas the 12 adityas are the 12 solar months that we have you know in the solar calendar so each month is referred to an, an aditya okay the 12 adityas as per uh, our um, vedas is vivaswan ariman pushyan dwasta savita bhaga dhata vidhata varuna mitra shakra or indra or urukrama urukrama is another name for vishnu who was born as urukrama 
the son of Nabi and Meru. Now she is also called as the mother of Vamana Avatar of Vishnu. Okay, so she vests the power of what I call as the fractals. Now I'll explain fractals with an example, but if you have understood fractals in a very simple manner, you have to say that these are uh, smaller patterns which are emerging within larger patterns. Right? So let me give you the verse in uh, Rig Veda, which is a reference to this fractal um, theory. So the words in Rig Veda to Aditi was Daksha sprang from Aditi and Aditi from Daksha. Now this, this itself is very, very deeper meaning. So it means Daksha is called as the father of Aditi and Daksha is called the son of Aditi as well. Right? So you see this is a fractal. So who came from whom? You know, whether it was it the chicken or the egg. So Daksha gave birth to Aditi and Aditi gave birth to Daksha. So many of the theosophists take this reference as uh, an eternal cyclic rebirth that is happening okay, uh, in the divine essence or that is the divine wisdom of the statement of the fractals. Uh, whereas in the Puranas uh, such as Shiva Purana or Bhagavad Purana, they suggest that Aditi was the wife of sage Kashyapa and she gave birth to the Adityas like I mentioned 12 Adityas which includes even uh, Surya, Indra and Vamana. Okay? Now to show you the, the power of fractals which happen in nature, let me share my screen again and show you what is uh, what actually fractals uh, reference and maybe you could be able to um, have a greater understanding of what fractals are. Okay, can you see that? Now, this is exactly how the fractals operate in your life and this is how the nature has everything in terms of fractals. Now, this is these, these small dolls are called as uh, a Russian um, Matryoshka uh, or they are called as the nesting dolls. You know, I don't know how to pronounce that word very clearly in Russian, but these are wooden dolls which can stack up one inside the other. Okay, so you have a bigger doll and then you have a smaller doll going into the smaller one. So these are uh, these these are uh, these are patterns which are smaller patterns which fit into a larger pattern, and that larger pattern in turn fits into something else. So you can see the same theory which nature also operates. You look at this fractal broccoli that I'm showing you, you know, these are fractals. You can see there's a smaller spiraling things within a bigger spiral, right? So these, this, this is how the nature uh, produces things. And everything in nature is, especially the, the, the plants and the trees, they always operate on fractals. If you go and see the Fibonacci series and you read about Fibonacci, he has applied Fibonacci series and numbers uh, to, to these fractals. So anyway, so this is just to show you the, uh, uh, you know, when I was referring to fractals, what fractals actually mean. So in that sense, what you can see is a, a lot of a repetition which happens here. Okay, just like Aditi, it is boundless, it is vast, it is limitless, her energy is high. Right, and uh, she is also being worshipped for blessings and protection of children. So Aditi has got all these virtues that you see. Now coming to uh, Punarvasu Nakshatra, and we have talked about the background of Punarvasu. Now what you often see with Punarvasu is these natives uh, kind of, uh, you know, have these friends, they could be very good hearted. I'm talking about the strengths of Punarvasu Nakshatra natives. They could be kind, they could be considerate, they could be friendly, they could be nurturing like Aditi, they could be generous. Like I said, you know, the green revolution of money, mm, they could easily make connection with others. They could have profound imagination, which is boundless. They're quite creative and um, they have very religious inclinations. They have interest in philosophy and spirituality. Um, they are looking for purification, for spiritual development. They're looking for strong uh, communication. You know, they have strong strengths in communication field. They could be excellent writers. They could be inspirational speakers. 
They could be involved in many successful projects. Now from the weakness, what I see that uh, some of on the weaker side, these people could be quite indecisive sometimes. They could be critical, they could be fickle-minded. Um, they could uh, lack a sense of foresight which brings uh, complications in their lives. There could be frequent changes that uh, their life situations might be going through. And what I've seen is uh, sometimes I've seen their relationships could be, um, could be unstable. Uh, they could also have multiple career changes that happen in their life. Right? And especially that I've seen that in the first three paths. When the first three paths are operating, the first three paths of Punarvasu are operating, these are the two common themes that I've seen as unstable relationships and multiple career changes. Um, and so, and another theme that I've also seen with Punarvasu is they get easily bored in life. Sometimes they're over in, in, uh, in like, uh, inter intellectualize their lives. And that's why they get quite bored with their lives because they become very monotonous. They become very repetitive for them. Now, today, uh, being Punarvasu Nakshatra, now today is going to be a very strong day for people to um, tap into their inner resources, their ability to bounce back from different difficulties. Uh, they could also be very philosophical today. They could be religious. They could be spiritual. They could be um, idealistic, you know, many of them you would find they would be very honest and truthful. Uh, they would also value their family and they would want to spend more time with their family. Naturally, today is a Sunday, so you find most of the people at home. Now, uh, these, uh, this day is usually, Punarvasu, uh, whenever Moon is transiting, Punarvasu, Punarvasu is very favorable for travel, exploration, uh, going on pilgrimage, uh, uh, pilgrimages, uh, imagination, uh, wanting to innovate, uh, worshipping of Mother Goddess, because again I said Aditi is related to Mother Goddess, Aditi is related to, uh, you know, the bountiful that the earth is going to provide. So you find a lot of people who might be interested in gardening, people who want to go and sow the seeds. So it could be, as I said, it could be allegorical, it could be metaphorical, it could be literal. So you have to always take them um, in different sense. So childcare, uh, buying cars or homes, as I said, is also in, associated with conveyance and travel. Activities related to healing, weddings, um, beginning new education, construction, laying foundation, spirituality, uh, teaching, uh, working with children. So all these things would be, uh, you know, great to do at today. But what is it not very favorable for today? Would not be a great day for lending, borrowing, you know, conflict or uh, having aggressive actions, uh, going into legal matters, law, um, all these things should be avoided. Okay, so I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. You can, um, you know, give me your comments, your feedback um, in the column below, or you could also go back. I've, I will be giving a link to my Facebook page where you can go and discuss um, more about nakshatras uh, on the Facebook page as well. So thank you very much for uh, watching my videos.